Hello, leader. When I was getting started hosting one to ones, I made one fatal mistake all the time. My agenda and focus were all about me, delegating my work to others and making sure I got what I wanted. It was all about me, me, me. And when you do that, you're making a huge mistake too, because your team members don't care so much about your workload. They care about their own. Today, we're going to be talking about this mistake and other things that leaders get wrong about hosting their one-to-one meetings. And I've got a pop quiz for you too. Oh, and I'll be telling you about the next episode that accompanies this one. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. Thanks for tuning in and following your curiosity to learn and honor your personal conviction to be the best leader you can be. On this podcast, you won't hear a bunch of theories presented by academics who haven't been in a workplace in years or ever, and you'll not hear from executives who are flush with capital, people, and pool tables in their cafeteria telling you how to build team culture. Nope. Why? Because you are a small business owner and you've built something great out of nothing. And through it all, you've learned that you need a team, but not just any team. I'm your host, Shelley Warren. I've led winning teams in retail, innovative technical teams at a Fortune 50 corporation for decades, not-for-profit boards, and in online business, and helped many remote teams win at work. And I can tell you that no one escapes team troubles, including me. These days, I'm the CEO of Stacking Your Team, where I teach and develop tools for small business owners so they can attract, retain, and develop their teams so the founder can step out of her day-to-day operation. I'm so happy you're here because we all know that the people side of running your business is often the most difficult, and the team that got you here may not be the team that gets you there. So come on, let's jump in to today's episode. You hired them, and now it's time to lead them. But it can feel like hit and miss. Sometimes you walk away from conversation with a team member, confident that they'll follow through, pretty much like you asked them to. Other times, you can walk away worried that you were not very clear, maybe even bombarded them with requests and direction. And now you're thinking, they'll probably be confused and unsure about what task to tackle first even though they didn't actually say they felt this way. So whether you're hosting one-to-ones for a long time now, or you're just getting started, it's time you learned how to lead an effective one-to-one. So why is this a big deal? Well, because you want your team members to feel confident, secure, and clear about what they're going to be working on. You don't want your team members walking away or logging off of Zoom more confused than what they were when they arrived. Some team members can hide this really well, but then return to their role reeling with frustration and disappointment. And you don't want that. Now, it's a fact. The number one reason why people quit is because they don't feel connected to their leader or their work. So let's fix that, starting with this. Here it is. Stop making it all about you. Yeah, I really mean it. When team members arrive for their regularly scheduled one-to-one, they're wanting to be seen and heard, and that means that they want the focus on them, not you. They want the focus on their work plan, not yours. And they want a chance to ask questions, not just answer yours. Yeah, I really mean it. Let's stop having your team members walk away from a one-to-one feeling discouraged and weighed down. Instead, let's make your time together count. Okay, I'm going to spring a pop quiz on you right now. Yeah, I mean it. Are you ready? Let's do it. Give yourself a check mark for every one of these that feel all too familiar to you. Here we go. You cancel one-to-ones 
often last minute. You rush through one-to-ones because you need to be somewhere else. You wonder if people dread coming to your one-to-ones. You offload a lot during one-to-ones, both what's on your mind and tasks that you want to delegate. Here's the next few. Your team members cancel their one-to-ones. You do most of the talking. You find yourself having to repeat the same direction and coaching over and over again. And here's the last one. Hosting one-to-ones feels like heavy lifting because you're never quite organized or prepared to host them. Now, if you checked off any of those, you are at risk of this. The first thing is wasting your time and your team members' time hosting ineffective conversations. You're also at risk of this second one. Your team feels disconnected from you, leading them to be disengaged and possibly quitting or starting with quiet quitting. And the third thing that you're at risk of is your team feeling disappointed, discouraged, and weighed down after your one-to-ones. Now, I know that it often feels like one-to-ones are just one more thing you have to do because you don't always prepare well for them. And I know leading people while serving your clients can be challenging because you don't always know how to divide your time and your energy is zapped. And before you know it, you haven't had a quality conversation with a team member in a really long time. You know, my clients often tell me that hosting one-to-ones can often be shoved to the bottom of their to-do list because they've got so many other conflicting priorities. So what is the real job of a one-to-one? Well, here it is. At a minimum, one-to-ones are designed to help your team members feel more connected to you and their work. It's that simple. After all, people want to work somewhere where they feel that they're doing something worthwhile and that they're putting in a worthwhile effort. So you and your leadership team can directly influence how your team members feel at work by focusing in on them setting a drumbeat for when your team members will have quality time with you and by making it normal during one-to-ones to talk about results, impact, gaps, behaviors, achievements, and career desires. So let's take a minute and talk about how to make it easier to plan for, follow through, and be consistent in your style of hosting one-to-ones. And by the way, your leadership team members can maintain this standard too, as they're hosting one-to-ones with the people that they're responsible to. First up, show your face. Set drum beats, formally invite your team members and make it normal that one-to-ones are on the calendar and demonstrate your commitment to their success and development. You know, too often, one-to-ones are dismissed and you end up talking with your team members on the fly or spewing out directions and tasks over Google Chat or Slack. And that is not a one-to-one. That's you dumping your to-do list onto someone else. Secondly, have a repeatable agenda. Now you wanna do this because you wanna treat everyone the same by effectively using everyone's time, having conversation starters, and key result areas consistently are talked about so that the team member comes prepared to maximize your time together. Because too often, one-to-ones feel hit and miss because you're not following any sort of plan. You're simply talking and asking questions and letting the conversation drive the pace and the outcomes. This is why your team member leaves feeling disappointed because it's likely the conversation was focused on you, your work plan, your delegation of tasks, and they are left having questions that didn't get answered, an alignment that wasn't agreed upon, and generally not feeling motivated other than 
that overwhelming sense of a heavy to-do list to now go and execute. And thirdly, what you'll want to do to make all of your one-to-ones feel so much different is you want to listen more, talk less. You're going to set an intention to create a space where your team members want to share their insight, ideas, feedback, and reinforce their commitment to the expectations and then take ownership of their outcomes or performance gaps. So sure, you've got items that need to be delegated, followed up on and details mapped out. And your team member has priorities that they wanna talk about too. If you monopolize the conversation, you risk having your team members feel like a robot, taking notes, nodding yes, and generally walking away feeling overloaded, instead of walking away feeling engaged and motivated to do their best work. One-to-ones are the very best opportunity to build relationships at work. So lean far into this. Ask yourself, how can I make sure this person feels comfortable to talk with me? How can I be sure that this person feels seen and understood? And how can I stop talking and start listening to what they're saying? Remember, people quit and often take coworkers along with them when they don't feel connected to their leader or their work. Inside the Leadership Lab programs, I teach all of our clients how to leverage one-to-ones and the five-hour work plan to make it easier for the leader or her leadership team members to know what to do in a one-to-one and how to make it normal for every team member to be invited to talk about their responsibilities and their results, both the good stuff and the not so great stuff. They love the one-to-one coaching questions I provide them. It's a tool that the CEOs and their leadership team members use to select a few key questions to kick off great conversations that get to the heart of the matter and make it very okay to ask for help, share a win, tell the outcome of a particular challenge, and raise their hand to take on more responsibility because they feel their work is important and highly valued by you and the entire team. You know, it's a big part of being a leader of people, processes, and profit centers to learn how to lead well. It's been my life's work, and I know that I'm not alone. Many of you who tune in here each week are addicted to becoming a better leader too. You want your highest performing team members to stay with you long term. You want your newer team members to evolve and add value and feel great doing it. You want more harmony on your team, less drama, and more people knowing how to win at work. It's that connection to their role, the brand, their peers, and you that matters, and you've got to pour into that all the time. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Connections at work really do matter. But what do you do to help maintain the connections with everyone when you have a large team? I mean, come on. You can't spend all of your time hosting one-to-ones when you have a large team. And if you have a leadership team, isn't it their role to host those one-to-ones as well? Right? Well, because aren't you supposed to be focusing on setting the vision and doing more business development? I want to invite you to come on back and join me on the next episode, where I'll share some great strategies for those of you who have a large team. I know it can feel more difficult to maintain those bonds with team members when you have so many of them. So let me share some ways that you can nurture those big team connections too, where often people can feel even more lost and invisible. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, You need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.